Hello, everyone. <clears throat> we had a day, uh, an interruption, an interruption, and let's finish, with God's help, the speech of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that we began at the beginning of this week. And it was from 1962. It's talking about why God counted the Jewish people, why God wanted the Jewish people to be counted. That's the name of this week's Torah portion. In fact, that's the name of the whole book of this, of the Torah, uh, numbers. Numbers <clears throat> means counting the Jewish people were numbered, they were counted. <clears throat> so the Rebbe asked a couple of questions which imply that there's something more here than meets the eye. <clears throat> Number one, why did God have to count the Jews? He knows how many Jews that there are. Number two, what's the point of counting them? What's, even if you do know how many there are, what's the point? Or if you don't know, I'm sorry, how many there are. So what's the point of counting them? Why do you have to count the Jews? So the Rebbe said that the whole point of counting the Jews is the, the Shla. There's the Shnei Lucha Dabrit, famous great holy rabbi called Rabbi Shaya Horowitz. And he said that's to, to show that they're important because everything that's uh, it's counted is important. So the Rebbe said, well, that's not really the way it goes. Everything that's, it's not that everything that's counted is important. Everything that's important is counted. When something that's counted, it shows that that, it just indicates that that thing is important. It doesn't make it important. And an important thing, it says according to law, Davosh Chashuv, it never loses its identity. So the Jewish people are already a Davosh Chashuv. They're important whether they're counted or not. And so the Rebbe finally concludes and he says that the reason that Moses wanted the Jews to be counted was in order to bring this importance of the Jews, the uniqueness of the Jews. They are chosen by God, they're God's chosen people, into the world. And then the, what are they chosen for? The Jews are chosen to improve the world, to make it better for everybody. That's what we're chosen for. And in order to do this, is this counting has to be brought out. In other words, every Jew, his Jewish identity, the fact that he counts as a Jew, has to be something that's not just kept quiet between him and God, or between him and himself, but it's a thing which is connected to the essence of, of his soul in the world. That's the excuse, because the essence of the Jewish soul is exactly that, to fix up the world. That's why the Jews are here. That's why the world is here. The world is here to be fixed up. And the Jews are here to do it. How do they fix up the world? This is by stressing <clears throat> that God exists and that God has a will and doing what God wants. Excuse me. Doing what God wants. Okay. It says the Rebbe, and that's what we got up to last time. That's why who was counted? Not all the Jews were counted. Only from the men from the age of 20 up. Said why? In fact, all the Jews are important. Every human being is important, but the Jews are important in the in that that only they can really correct the world the way it's supposed to be. They can perfect the world according to the Torah, and that's the idea of going to war. For the men, only men, went out to war, and they went out to war when they were twenty years and older. So it's coming to tell us that even though everyone is important, but what are they important for? They're important to conquer the world. Conquering the world means to make the world a good place, not to conquer it for us, but to conquer the world that everyone should do what the Creator created them to do. That's what it means to conquer the world. So everyone should follow what the Creator wants. I, how do we know what the Creator wants? Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm just cleaning up some dirt over here. How do we know what the Creator wants? That's why God gave the Torah. And that's what the, it's at the end of this counting, this whole idea of counting was in the Torah, and to get the, to, to receive the Torah and to receive. <clears throat> so therefore, again, just to summarize, the uniqueness of the Jewish people has to be expressed in the world, that there is a God, that God has a will, <clears throat> that God is good, that God cares, <clears throat> that God listens to all prayers, that God is infinitely close to every human being. He creates everybody. Be their month free, like we said previously. Like we said previously, very safe for the book of Bamidbar, this book, which is called Begin in the Desert, it's called, also it's called Humash Pakodim. It's called, in Hebrew, also it's called Numbers. A num and a name, a, a name, and especially a name in Hebrew, Veis Dach Oif, and this indicates the content of the thing which is called. Vipal, the Sefer Bamidbar, because this book, 
which is the book of Bamidbar, it's talking about the desert. That's how it begins. Sefer Bamidbar is also called Pekudim. It's also called Numbers. The Ikar, mainly because of this, the first uh, paragraph here where the Jewish people are counted, is a riot. This is, must be a proof, though, as they're talking that the whole entire content from the whole entire uh, reading, Torah reading, the Shabbat, is essentially the idea of counting. And in this counting alone, this counting not only out simon, not just a sign of that the Jewish people are, are important, like we said before, important things are counted, but even more, just the counting itself is a very high thing. It's not just a means to something else to know how many Jews there are or to express their greatness in the world and etc. That's also true, but it must be something. There's something special about counting itself. It's a thing in itself. Was mitzad them because of this the dozik or mila because of this specific quality whatever it is that counting brings out is parshas bamidbar the par this Torah portion of bamidbar <clears throat> is the one we always read before the giving of the Torah before the holiday of Shavuot. So somehow this idea of counting is somehow the essential to receiving the Torah. We'll we'll see how. Unvi der month like we said previously. As Alder says similarly, is Oich Sphere at the Omer, also counting of the Omer. This is also preparation to giving of the Torah. So, if so, in order for the Jews to receive the Torah 50 days after they left Egypt, there had to be two things. First of all, counting the Jews, and second of all, counting the days. Chach is by spheres because the counting of Sphere at the Omer, counting the 50 days, is Nitshayach, is not relevant to Abraham and Indian from Hashivas. Counting the days, that's not so much, or at all, the idea of showing that the days are important. Counting the days is a separate commandment, not to show that the days are important, not the same thing as counting the Jews. Okay, but, so what is this uniqueness of counting the days? What's going on over here? And why is counting so important that that's what's going to bring to the giving of the Torah? The, the Engeshaft from Minyan, the, uh, I say the, the, res, the result, of counting, the purpose of counting is Allah gleich, that everyone is the same. Uh, when you count, make a census count, so there's, nobody counts more than somebody else. Everybody is one. A groiso, a great person, is nitmer is only einem one, from only one, and a small person is also not less than one. Uh, you get a person who's rich, and he's famous, and he's powerful, and he's the mayor, he's the governor, who knows, he's the president, and he's ruling and he's telling everybody what to do. Everyone has to listen to him and he knows the Torah. Everyone has a question they come and ask him. So that's like a really important person. So when you count the Jewish people, he gets a count one, wherever he is, if you count him number five, he's number five. But he's also one, the, the, the lowest person with the lowest IQ, and the person is a thief and who knows what, and he has no connection whatsoever to anything good, he still is a Jew, so he's counted as one. So when you count the Jews, every Jew is one. Or in the language of simple American, everyone counts. When in them, gleich, zich, ois, der minion by Israel, in Sphiris Omer. And in this, it is, it, this is where, where the counting of the Jews is similar to the counting of the days in Sphiris Omer. In many Bani Israel, when the Jewish people are counted, is not cooking that it makes no difference. Or if they're for the, the uniqueness, the differences between the different types of Jews that there are, the different levels of Jews that there are. As hot man gets sailed, the other, every single Jew was counted with the same number. One. Moses was one. I was one. Everyone's one. When a Zoe Varen it's also the same thing as counting the 49 days of Sphira to Omer. Each day is one. One minute, just changing pages here. <clears throat> Excuse me.
<clears throat> every day in Sfirat Omer is counted the same. Number one, it doesn't make any difference on the different the holiness of the day, whether it's a day of Shabbat, it's Rosh Chodesh, it happens to be a, one of the holidays, the Yom Tov, right in the in, the, in the Shvi Shal Pesach, the holidays, every day is counted as one. Yom Tov, Shabbos, every single day is one. That's counting the Omer. <clears throat> so that's the same thing as counting the Jews. Every single Jew is one. They have the same value. In other words, they count. Thus, was men had sailed that which we counted all the Jews equally. Vezdoif, this indicates as Etzim and Neshama from Yidin. What is this thing of a Jewish identity? Why is this a Jewish identity? You see, you have Jews that are totally anti-religious, anti, they can't stand the idea, but they'll say, I'm a Jew. And they'll say, I'm an atheist Jew. Right? They don't have to believe in God to be a Jew. I'm a Jew. So what makes them a Jew? What, what, what makes them a Jew then? I don't know, you know, my mother was Jewish, but that's a Torah definition. That's, a, that's according to the Torah. That's, that's a religious thing already. What do you mean you're a Jew? I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm a Jew. Just like you are. Just, I'm just good a Jew as you are. You know, he's got a point, but but how? What is this Jewish identity that he's so jealous of? What is it? So the answer is that's the essence of the Jewish soul. It has no description. It has no qualities. You can't measure it. It's just pure essence. Jew. In fact, the Jews are the only really true identity, if you want to call it, in the world. You take a Jew, it makes no difference what color skin he is or where he lives, what city he lives, even if he doesn't even know that he's a Jew. He is an essence of Jew. It doesn't depend on his opinion or on his, his qualifications, how he looks, how he eats, how he sleeps, what he believes. It makes no difference. If his mother was Jewish, then it means he's got a Jewish soul. And this Jewish, that's why God decided it. But this Jewish soul is alive. This Jewish soul is above understanding. This Jewish soul is very, very dynamic. And it forces people to do the most crazy things. And uh, you'd never believe that Judaism could make a person give his life for what? What for what? Right? These people that hate religion and everything, and they hate anything to do with Torah, anything commandments, but they will they will give their lives for the Judaism. If somebody says you dirty Jew, they'll fight with them. Right? If you would have said you're a dirty American or you're a dirty, they're not gonna fight with them, even though he might be an American. And thus was Menahat get sailed, all the Yidin Goliath, all the Jews equally, vased or if this indicates on the essence of the soul of a Jew. Men vazen, men zainen, kokos, there are what's called personality powers, revelations of your of your soul, intellect, emotions. There everybody is different. There, there's some people that have more intellectual, some people are more emotional, some people are more, how do you say, more powerful in their emotions, assertive. Other people are more delicate, sensitive. There's a difference between, and in the <clears throat> revealed aspects of the soul, intellect and emotions, there's differences between one Jew and another. But the essence of the Jewish soul, all the Jews are exactly the same. The difference between serving God from the revealed powers of the soul and serving God from the essence of the soul is like this. When we serve God is... Only because of the revealed powers we've served God with our emotions or with our intellect, as yes, as is Zion Messias is then if the person is in existence, Zion I'm gonna ich, there is me, and I am separate from God, and my that that I do Torah and commandments is vile because a gonna give a get given a This is like an additional thing to me. I decided to put on, I have a keeper. You know, why Why is it we wear a keeper on our head? Why, why is there a keeper on our head? To show that God is above me. So in the words that I'm something and God is something. But God is a bigger something, is a more real something. But I still exist. Air is Makayim Torah. A person does Torah and the commandments. Because a Zoe buttered the other, in Dinah Kochas, because that's what his intellect tells him. He was convinced. And that's what his emotions told him, his heritage, his parents, the Jews died for the sake of God. I'm going to be different from them, right? Zion and Frishtan, and you feel it's according to his understanding and his feeling. Something like, you know, an American, when they pull up the flag, that's what it used to be. And there's, you know, he's got goosebumps all over, and then the oh, say, can you see? But there's still the person is a separate person, and America is separate. He just loves America. America is wonderful. It's very good. And he's willing to give his life for the country, and because there's other people that live there, so they'll, you know, that'll be for their benefit. 
is still some sort of a separate, separate and America does not create him. Here we're talking about God is creating us. If a person serves because of logic, serves God, thinks about God, then there's going to be two separate things, which is not, but it's not the case when he arouses the essence, a Jew arouses the essence of his soul. is Then it's just totally one with God. Then his whole essence feels godliness. Jews and God and whole and God, Jews and the Torah and God are totally one. It's like a person loves his parents, right? A person loves his father and his mother. He loves them. <clears throat> a person has a normal relationship with his parents. He loves them, even if his parents didn't do that much for him or whatever. They didn't have they didn't have the let's say the means. They didn't love his father as long as his father didn't beat him up or something like that. So he loves if a father, if his father beat him or tortured him or something. So he still loves his father, but he just can't bring it out. He's confused because essentially people love their fathers. Not like Freud said. Freud and Adler and those people, they were very sick people. It's not so. The love that a child has for his parents is an essential love. And it makes no difference if his parents are stupid or if his parents are, or if his parents are even, God forbid, they're in a coma. He still loves them. Right? That love is something essential. It's above any qualities. Something like that is the love of every single Jew to God. Because they feel that that's the love of God to every single Jew. We're his sons. Not that God doesn't love everybody. He loves everybody. Like a, a good person loves everybody on the block. Right? And love, love wonderful people. But he loves his children even more. And that's the whole essence of the Jewish people with God. That they're one. They're one. That's the rev, what's revealed when we count the Jews. This oneness. This uniqueness and, and unity of every Jew with God. Odiavoda from Etzim and Hashem. This is what's called serving God from the essence of the soul. This is what kept Jews Jewish for all these thousands of years that the non Jews have been doing everything possible to destroy our Judaism, everything in the world to destroy Judaism, to destroy the Torah. What's me excited? Come on. I started, I haven't written on Facebook for like years. At least that I remember anyway. So I decided on starting writing again on Facebook. So anyway, there's these people always, you know, they come from the church and these evangelists and stuff like that. And I tell them, I say, listen, you know, your religion is wrong. All Christianity, it's a lie. The whole thing is wrong. It's false. It's mean. It's evil. It's negative. Right? You say, the fact of the matter is that God is good. He's infinitely close. He can forgive us on his own. He doesn't have to have a person in the middle. And every human being is good. They're made in the image of God, not like we see everybody's. Anyway, so somebody writes me back, and they, you know, really let me have it. I'm going to burn in hell, and I'm going to this and that. And I was like, so I wrote back to the person. I said, listen, I'm going to burn in hell anyway, according to you. Everybody's going to burn in hell if they don't hurt like just like you. I said, but look at this. You people have been trying to destroy Judaism with every means possible for 2,000 years nonstop. And I just want, wrote three sentences, and you're all going berserk. You're going out of your minds, right? Out of your minds. What the, the essence of the Jewish soul is something which is connected to the essence of God and connected to the essence of the Torah. The Jews and the Torah and God are totally one. And there is no other example of this in the world of total unity. That's the, that's the servants of the essence of the soul. And that's what brought out when, God, when Moses counted the Jews. Because of this, the essence of the soul, all the Jews are counted equally. But when they're counted, in them inyan from spheres omer. This is also expressed in the counting of the omer. Was all a tug, which every day is also counted equally. Bashaz the of the service is nor only with a person's intellect and emotions is for us. So there's a difference between one day and another day, a weekday a holiday, Shabbat, a good day, a bad day. Um, Rosh Chodesh and Yom Tov and Shabbat. That the service of Rosh Chodesh and you, 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 is the first day of the month. And Yom Tov, like the Shri Pesach. And Shabbat, this is, a person can do this, it can be what, excited. It's a Jewish thing. But when it comes to the weekdays, so the weekdays is not a Jewish thing. Everybody has a weekday. What? The weekdays, is, they're called week, W-E-E-K. But in fact, it's also W-E-A-K. There's nothing special. It's a weekday. It's not as strong. The service of, of, of a regular weekday 
then we have to serve God in a totally different way. It's not a gift. We have to serve God from below to above. In all of our ways, we have to know him. In them, it could be that in the weekdays, he doesn't have so much of a, a Jewish enthusiasm in the weekdays. He goes to work. He's working in his job. The ace over one, a Jew, though, arouses the essence of the soul. And by him, the essence is one thing with godliness all the time. And it becomes, godliness becomes one also in his brain, also in his emotions. And then when a person takes this attitude that every single minute of my life is a miracle, and that I myself am chosen by God to tell everybody this, how miraculous existences done then nita kain chiluk then there won't be any difference in time which day it is whether it's a weekday or it's a shabbat Allah Zion Satan all of his times when all of us are to it and everything what he does is and is permeated with godliness because <clears throat> it makes no difference where God puts you that's you're you're there to be a how do you say an emissary of, of the creator of the universe and therefore, counting the number of Jews and counting the days, this is a preparation for the giving of the Torah. Because what happened when God gave the Torah to the Jews? God said, I am God, your God. As get the godliness is not just an additional thing to the Jews. Rather, Elokecha, I am your power. I am your life. At Mount Sinai, everybody realized that God is my creator. God is enlivening me. Without God, I have no life. I have no anything. I have no body. Thus is Zion Levin, that God is my life. And therefore, and therefore, and eventually all the world is going to reveal it because the same God that's creating the Jews is creating everybody. But it's just the Jews' job to teach everyone this. And therefore, Dinter, the Abish, therefore he serves God, need normally to learn, and not just when he learns Torah, when he does the commandments, or when he prays, but all of the things that he does because everything is holy. From then, from this, which far Matan Torah, because before Matan Torah, Darf men up, and we have to have both of these things together. Side whether counting the Omer and also counting the Jewish people <clears throat> in Parshat Bamidbar. So it's understood that as in Yeder Einor, that in every single, each one of these, counting the Jews and counting the days of the Omer, is for on there is something special which is not in the other one. When Davka Dorach Beidu, you have to have both counting the days of Spirit Omer and counting the Jews, only by means of this is it a vessel to receive the Torah. Meaning the counting, the number of the Jewish people is not connected with any other thing. Oyser them, just counting. But Spirit Omer is apparently counting from this omer, counting from this bundle of barley that the Jews brought the day after Passover. Men sailed, we feel, count how many days there are from the sacrificing of this burning up of this barley offering. It's called the omer. Omer means a bundle. Is this is a sailing, this is a counting which is connected with serving God. Avoda. So, so when the Jews were counted, they just counted the Jews because that's what they are. Just what the Jews are, not what they do. The Jews are the sons of God. The Jews are the chosen ones of God. <clears throat> the Jews are the representatives of God in the world <clears throat> to all mankind. That's what the Jews are. Counting the Omer is something that the Jews do. This is serving God. So if so, from now it's understood at the counting of the Jewish Okay, so we see we have to have both, counting the Jewish people and counting the Omer. Counting the Omer is something that we do. We count the days 
from the bringing of the sacrifice of the barley in the, in the temple, which is not the case counting the Jewish people. This is just counting something that we are. Counting the Jewish people, this is what we are. We are, like we said, one with God, the sons of God. How the Jews are connected, this is counting the essence of the Jewish soul, where every Jew is the same. Expressing it into the world. Okay, but you have to have this and also counting the days. Why? Was this all a Mogans? Counting the Jewish people, the Jewish people are, they were counting the essence of the Jewish soul. And every Jewish soul is always the same. Complete. And Etzim and Neshama, the essence of the soul, is Fadr Zich Nit kind of order. You don't have to do anything. Counting the essence, the Jews are just Jews. It's just a gift that God gave. Whether you like it or not, whether you avoid it or not, whether you use it or not, every Jew is the same. That's talking about the essence of the soul. That's God's business. Nit mer was the ken zayin element, but it can be concealed. Un durach and salin by means of counting everyone equal, equally, is men that we we arouse and reveal the essence of the soul. So we're just revealing what it is. That's counting the Jews. What about counting the Omer? Counting spirit, the Omer, counting the days. This is a service from the, the how do you say, personality powers of the soul. Intellect, emotions, etc. And we count seven times seven according to the emotions and the different aspects of the soul. But we have to do the work. We have to mention and elevate uh, through our service. Oh God, every day is like a different aspect of God. Chesed Shebe Chesed, Gevur Shebe Chesed. Freer is an open, early, previously it's in a way of serving God from offering up the Omer, this barley offering. And then after that, in an individual way, first it's general, that the, the priest opens it up, and then it's in a uh, more specific way. Every Jew counts every day, individually. You had to talk from the Memtes. It's not that somebody stands up in front of the congregation and he counts the days and everyone says, oh man, no. He counts the days, everyone says, oh man. And then you say, okay, you just finished your job. Now we, have, every Jew also has to count individually. Which is not the case when counting the Jews. Counting the Jews was done by Moses and Aaron. They did all the counting. The Jews didn't have to do anything. They just had to be Jews. And Spirit Omer, every Jew has to do it individually. You count the 49 days <clears throat> <clears throat> of spirit Omer it has to be that you're refining your a different emotion. Like it's known that why it's seven weeks, it says seven times seven that corresponds to the seven emotions, and each one of those is composed of seven facets, and so that's where we get 49. Das is Oyach Der Tam. This is the inner reason why spirit the Omer, counting the Omer, has to be each and every Jew individually. The spirit of the counting is not connected with all of the Jews altogether, but rather with every Jew individually, even to the degree that it can be as idea that one Jew, Zal Holton, could be by one uh, number in counting the Omer, and another can be in another. Interesting. How can it be? Let's say if I count Spirit the Omer and I go over the international date line. So if I go over the international date line, I can either add a day or I can subtract, subtract the day in the date, in the date. But as far as my personal counting, as I count the where I'm where I left off yesterday, if yesterday I counted, let's say for instance the thirtieth day, and I go over the international date line, so the date changes, but my counting doesn't change. So I'll be in a place where everybody is counting something different than me. Right? I'm counting according to my date where I was before the international date line. And these people are counting their word with, with their the, after the international day line. And so it ends up that they're on a different day, and I'm still like one day behind them, or could be one day as from them, one date behind them. I'm sorry. As from them, from this is by spirit the Omer. This is counted every single. I'm sorry. Right, so that's counting the Omer. This is no contradiction to the fact that every day of the spirit of Omer, everybody counts the same thing. See, whether it's weekday, or whether it's, it's a Rosh Chodesh, all the days are counted number one. But nevertheless, still, in counting the Omer, it's an individual endeavor, not a general endeavor like counting the Jewish people, 
But the Jewish people just stood there and they were counted. Here you have to do the counting. As Hotter does <clears throat> Zel ben Chayas, that every day you should count the spirit of Omer with the same enthusiasm and the same service, whether it's Shabbos or Yom Tov. This is a proof, the service, of, the, the counting of the Omer, this is connected to the essence of the soul. Okay, so here we have, what, again, <clears throat> let's just understand what the Rebbe is saying. The Jews are going to receive the Torah. The same thing next week, we're going to receive the Torah. Next week, we're going to receive the Torah on the holiday of Shavuot. The Torah is not just a historical thing. It's just that it happened a long time ago. But, you know, back then, God revealed himself. But now, you know, we remind that we're religious Jews. So we do what it says in the books. You know, it says, and so the Rebbe said, okay, that's one way of looking at it. And I guess, you know, maybe that's better than nothing. But in some ways, it's doing nothing would be better. Why? Because if you do nothing, at least you know that you've got to improve. But if you do half, so you think, I'm, I've died, at least I'm better than nothing. So what's supposed to be the idea over here? We're supposed to try to feel the godliness, the miracle, the surprise, which is in the Torah. And we have to feel that the Torah is this incredible, incredible, uh, how do you want to call it, wonder, that there's no comparison to it in the world and nobody even claims that there is such a life, anything like that. But on the other hand, it's, it's this wonder of God, it's just a book in the library. What's so wonderful about a book in the library? So the idea is we have to try to feel the godliness and at least believe in the godliness and perceive the godliness as much as we can, the infinite infinity in the Torah. In the Torah. There's two ways of doing this. One way is, was done to us, that every Jew is counted. That we don't do anymore. And the other way is counting the Omer, counting the days. And that we do do. By Both of these countings brings out the inner essence of what a Jew is, or what time is. In other words, God is counting the Jews because they're important to him. He's counting time because it's also important. But time depends on our work. And, and the, 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 the being counted, the people, that, that depends on our identity. So we have to have both. The service of counting the Omer, this is with our inner powers, our personality powers. And like we said, after the day of Shabbat, started. this begins with the Oifim, this elevates the our, our powers, our personality, and it brings into them uh, uh, illumination. We feel that we're here for a purpose. We're not just doing nothing. We're just, just you know, born by some sort of whatever is a carbon combustion or something like that. Lochem, that means we have to sefartem, counting the umr. The word for sefartem also means to be uh, clear, uh, shining. That comes from the essence of the soul. That that's counting the Omer, refining the world. The counting the Jewish people, this is to arouse the essence of the soul. This is from above to below. This is the thing that God does, so to speak. This, as does this, but this will affect even the importance of the Jewish people in the world. Counting the Omer is to refine the inner powers and to elevate them. And counting the Jews is, is to bring down the essence powers, essence powers into the world and make it holy. So counting the Omer is sort of from below to above. That's what we do. And counting the Jews, this was from above to below to tell us who we are. Azir and Haga, Zolzai and Azoi, the Esfadrzai, namely that when the Jews realize this, then your contact, conduct will be in such a way <clears throat> that it will, it will be in tune with the essence of your soul. Huh? Not bad. And what happens when you feel the essence of your soul? So usually, you know, usually the picture that's presented in a person's mind, you you realize the essence of your soul and you're just sort of, you know, zorked out. Hmm. Right? You don't answer questions. You don't do anything whatsoever. You're just holy. That's it. You don't eat. You don't sleep. You don't go to the bathroom. Sure, you don't talk to anybody. You just sort of glide through life. You know, not paying attention. Well, that's not Judaism, and it's not normal. Also, maybe people that are have a lobotomy or something do that, but that's not Judaism. Exactly the opposite. A person when he feels the essence of the soul, this, <clears throat> he activates it. 
suddenly he feels he has tremendous responsibility every single instant of his life to be positive, to be productive, to have a good influence, to say good things, see good things, hear good things. <clears throat> Just like God. God is creating everything all the time. He never rests one moment. And so that's that's counting the Jewish people. Counting the Jewish people is realizing our identity. Counting the Omer means elevating everything in the world and putting godliness, even time. And both of them depend on the same thing, counting. It's bringing the essence of the soul, number one, into everything. Like them, according to this, now we can understand why it is that before Mount and Torah, we had to count both of them. The novelty of, of the Torah is that the upper worlds came down into the physical world and the lower worlds came up to the spiritual. How was it before giving of the Torah? Holy people were holy. They were holy. They sat by themselves. They were holy. You had to go to them. They had nothing to do with the world, and that's what made them holy. People that were not holy, they were mundane. So they were stuck in the, whatever it is in the mundane world. And if they wanted to be a little bit holy, they would go to the holy people, and they would instruct them or something. When the Torah was given, suddenly they realized that God is not far away. God is not far away. God is infinitely close. The upper worlds came down. On the other hand, the holiest of holiest people, they realize that God is infinitely more distant than they could possibly imagine, that they have to elevate themselves from below. The highest of the highest worlds was revealed here, God himself. And the lowest of the worlds, they realize that everyone must, that's the wise people, and everyone can, even the lowest people, they can achieve the oneness of God. In the same Ten Commandments, it's Ketu, that's written, don't kill for murderers is written, I am God, your God, the essence of all the secrets of the Torah. <clears throat> so this is also found inside of us that the upper worlds came down and the lower worlds went up. That's in our, and the essence of the soul. Elionim, the lower part of our soul, that's our personality. Zolzain for Buna should be connected. I'm sorry, the upper the essence of the soul should be connected to yeah, what's this? What happened? One minute. The essence of the soul, that's the essence, the highest level should come down into our day-to-day -day activities, and the lowest powers of our soul, day-to-day -day activities, should be connected with the essence. <clears throat> the upper world should be connected with the korchos pinimi, with the lower powers, our personality powers, our intellect and our emotions, and the takhtonim, the lower aspects of godly, of our soul, taktonim, that says this means as oich and seichel, that also in our intellect and in our brain and in our emotions of our heart. Let me point it over here. That they also should be godliness. Not just like godliness is an additional thing, I'm a religious person or whatever, but I'm, I'm a person and I'm religious. It says, no, it has to be one thing. Like it says, like the essence of the soul. There's people that they wrote to their Lamavich Rebbe, and they said, I'm a doctor and I'm also a religious Jew. And the Rebbe would write back to them, first of all, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy you wrote to me, and I hope that you won't be, uh, you won't take this in the wrong way. But the fact is that first of all, you're a Jew. And second of all, you're a doctor. There's a doctor, that's an additional thing to you. But the fact that you're a Jew, that's you. Was that, <clears throat> this is the, what happened immediately in the first <clears throat> word that God spoke, the first commandment that God spoke on Mount Sinai. I am God, your God. I, the essence of God, became your power, your life. Anochi, Misha Anochi, the essence of godliness was this hecha from the Hasaga, which is totally above any understanding, un is, and it is, connected with the essence of the soul. This was, this will be this will be your power, your life, your very being. The koach, the power in the inside, who you are, your identity will be, I'm, I'm a Jew, I'm connected to God. Like in with uh, Yonah, the pride of the story of Yonah, right? I'm a, I'm a Jew, I fear God. That's the essence of what he was, who he was. When the Rebus, therefore, it is demanded 
from each one of us before the giving of the Torah, a preparation from the essence of the soul. Aziz Zolashtain, that should be in a revealed way. Was thus Verdurach Minyan. How is this? How can we reveal it? By counting the Jews. Whether <clears throat> for the inner powers, whether it's because of our intellect and emotion, or because of our essence of our soul, we have to awaken them both. That they should be, Verdurach should be refined and vessels to the essence of godliness by means of counting the Omer. Counting the Omer is refining the world. Be the Jews being counted, that's counting us. Oh, you can say, one second, we're not being counted now, but we're reading about it in the Torah, how God counted the Jews. And this is the purification. And when we read this portion in the Torah about how God counted the Jews, <clears throat> this is the purification of our souls to know that every one of us, in the fact that we're Jews, means that we're connected to the essence of God. Something which is, no matter how much we, and how do you say, uh, the, the disagree or reject or despise this idea, right? You're trying to make me different from everybody else. God did it. It's God's business. And that's re what reality is. And that, when we realize this, then that'll be a favor not only to us, but to the whole entire world. That's the idea of giving the Torah into the world to make this world a beautiful, meaningful, blessed, happy, healthy, and holy place. Have a good day with Mashiach now.